Welcome to Economics Online for Teachers Part 1, or EOFT as we call it. We're so glad that you're joining us in this online adventure in interactive learning, and we're confident that you'll find the course useful and enjoyable. EOFT is the virtual version of the FTE's flagship program, Economics for Leaders. If you've attended EFL, you'll find many of the lectures and activities in EOFT to be familiar. But this time around, you'll be doing the background reading, and you'll do the problem solving that we left up to the high school students in the summer. If you haven't been to Economics for Leaders, perhaps EOFT will spark your interest, and we'll see you there in the future. In any case, whether you're new to interactive economics education or already a dedicated practitioner, Economics Online for Teachers will help you hone the tools and confidence to transform your classroom into a place where students actively engage in economic reasoning. Economic reasoning, that's the focus of FTE programs and materials. Our goal in Economics for Leaders, and thus in EOFT, is ultimately practical. We want you and your students to have at your disposal the powerful tools for understanding human behavior that have emerged from the discipline of economics. This is a very different task than just mastering vocabulary or drawing graphs and models. We want you all to be able to do economics, to be comfortable applying the tools of economic analysis to your own decision making and to your observation of the interactions that take place in the many communities you participate in every day. To that end, EOFT is organized around a set of economic reasoning propositions, or ERPs. They're displayed for you on the screen. Take a moment to read each one as it comes up. Notice first what the ERPs don't do. They don't include passive definitions of vocabulary terms, and they don't require memorization of concepts or manipulation of graphs and complex mathematical formulas which is not to say that those tools of the economist are not valuable. Instead, the economic reasoning propositions reorder our priorities in studying economics, from learning about the tools of the discipline to actually using them to achieve insight into human behavior. The economic reasoning approach builds understanding by targeting people and the activity that occupies most of our waking lives, making choices. Bear with me here. I know you can read, but I'm going to go through the text of each of the five economic reasoning propositions individually in order to give you a preview of how they will be addressed in the content lessons that you'll encounter in Economics Online for Teachers Part 1. ERP number one deals with our inevitable economic question. What's the impact of scarcity and how are we going to deal with it? First, Notice that economic reasoning targets not the definition of scarcity, although we'll certainly get to that, but what scarcity means for human behavior. Because of scarcity, people choose. And here's a major aha. Social outcomes emerge from those individual choices. Social phenomena aren't caused by ethereal forces out there somewhere. They're the results of choice, our choices, whether we're acting individually, in groups, as business people, or even as citizens and government officials. In EOFT1, the social phenomenon we're going to look at is the paradox of wealth and poverty in the modern world. Think of economic reasoning as a set of critical thinking skills that are broadly applicable to understanding human behavior. FTE courses are set in a variety of contexts to showcase the power of those reasoning tools. The context in EOFT is world poverty, why it exists, and what can be done about it. Lesson one will give you an overview of poverty in the world, both historically and today, and it will present the argument that economic growth is the key to wealth as a first step in answering the question of why economics is important if we care about the wealth and poverty of nations. The second reasoning principle also targets the all-important sequence of scarcity, choice, 
and cost. And it introduces us to the most powerful tool of economic reasoning, opportunity cost analysis. The cost of a choice is the value of the next best alternative foregone, measurable in time or money, or some alternative activity given up. In lesson two, we'll review this basic vocabulary and get ourselves into the habit of using economic terminology like cost and price more precisely than we tend to in daily conversation. Economic proposition number three people respond to incentives in predictable ways, builds on our understanding that people weigh benefits and costs when making choices. And it sends us searching for the carrots and sticks that influence them. Lessons three and four dissect the role of a very powerful incentive, a very predictable incentive, price, in shaping people's behavior in markets, both as suppliers and consumers. At the same time, we'll be developing an appreciation of markets as institutions, and that's the subject of economic reasoning proposition number four. Institutions are the rules of the game that influence choices. We'll use this term, rules of the game, frequently, for it seems to best capture our conscious and subconscious guidelines for behavior in the many anonymous commercial exchanges we engage in every day. Using institutional differences as a framework for comparison will help us to connect what we've learned about incentives like price back to our overriding question of why some countries are rich and others are not. In lessons three and four, you'll get lots of practice identifying incentives and implying institutional analysis to everyday and extraordinary events that we hear and read about in the news. The final lesson in EOFT1 takes institutional analysis a step farther by examining a particular market, the market for labor. The analysis of labor markets and labor issues allows us to shift the focus from the wealth and poverty of nations to the wealth, that is, the incomes, large and small, of individuals. Understanding based on knowledge and evidence imparts value to opinions. In other words, economic reasoning proposition number five says, crossing your arms and saying, that's my opinion, isn't the economic way of thinking. This fifth economic reasoning proposition is essential to all reasoning and analysis, not just economics. But rather than assume it, we decided to articulate and emphasize the importance of supporting analysis with data. Too often in the social sciences, in politics, and in everyday conversation, we confuse valuing a person's right to an opinion with valuing the opinion itself. Sound economic reasoning requires researching the facts and using evidence, logic, and explanation. While ERP number five may not be invoked or expressly articulated in the outlines and lectures, it is a key component of every lesson in this course. The use of data is featured throughout, and assignments provide or ask for research-based evidence to support contentions and conclusions. Together, the five lessons in EOFT1 introduce the tools of economic reasoning and institutional analysis. The partner course, should you decide to take it, is called EOFT Part 2, and it continues the analysis with five more lessons on entrepreneurship and innovation, property rights and the environment, money, the role of government, and international trade. Each of the lessons in EOFT Part 1 is comprised of a lesson guide, lecture, classroom activity, and an assignment. Assignments typically require reading the lesson outline and one or more supplementary sources, submitting a written assignment that includes practice and or research problems, and participating in an online discussion forum with other members in the class. A term project and final exam are also required. All the elements of the course are provided online. Please review the preparation materials including directions for registering and paying for graduate credit, explanations of the various features of the course website, a course calendar, and directions for submitting assignments.
If you've not already reviewed the Getting Started materials, please do so when you finish this lecture, and then, if you have questions, please don't hesitate to contact your instructor. And once again, welcome to Economics Online for Teachers. We're looking forward to working with you.